Hi guys, I'm Oliver Landy and this is my five tips for automotive photography. This video is aimed at people who have just got into car photography and are looking to learn and improve and get better shots of their cars just like this. So today I'm going to be shooting with my good buddy Mark McGee, he's an amazing photographer, he's got a stunning Instagram account and an amazing YouTube channel with loads of really good content that is that I found really valuable for myself. So go check him out, then go to Instagram and follow him, then go to Instagram again and follow me and then come back. So now that you're back, all we need to do is introduce the car that I'm going to be shooting today. This is one of my personal favourites, it's an amazing car. It's a 911 GT3 RS in an amazing colour. Here's some juicy B-roll. Okay, so tip number one is always make sure the car is as clean as it can possibly be before you go to your location. And then it's always a good idea to get some quick detailer and have a microfiber towel, preferably a clean one for the shoot so that if you picked up any little dirt flicks or any spots of dust on the way to the location, you can give it a quick clean. You don't have to then do it in Photoshop afterwards. This is tip number two, and this is all about the angles that you're going to shoot the car from. Now, in general, there are going to be some stock go-to positions that you're going to go to, and that's going to be head-on, rear shot, side shot, three-quarter shot, but it's also going to be the angle that you take the photo from, not just the position of the car. Now, there's a whole bunch of go-tos that I have and I'm going to try and show you as many from this shoot, but I'm also going to show you some from other sessions. Just so you can build up a, a whole library of, of go-to shots that you can try and get during your sessions. couple of things to bear in mind here. One is that some cars look better from lower angles than others. If it's a really low car, like supercars or very heavily lowered cars, then you can get really, really low. But for some cars, getting too low actually takes away something from the, the car. And you're trying to show it in its, its, its you know, the, 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 the lines of the car and the, the design of the car. And you want to try and find the optimal angles for that particular car. And that can be different car to car so just experiment a bit with it but hopefully these gives you some ideas to, to start off with that will help you out one last thing to bear in mind guys that shots from eye level tend to be the most uninteresting and that's just because we're so used to seeing everything from eye level if you get low or actually if you get high then you're going to get a more interesting shot of that particular car so if you can get up on the second level of a car park and shoot down if you can use a ladder or anything else to get higher up then that, that, you know, that's gonna give you an interesting angle that people might not have seen before. But equally, if you can get low, then you might see uh, another perspective and the car might look that little bit more aggressive or powerful because you're shooting up at it. And I do this with almost all of my images. I almost never shoot at eye level. Okay guys, so the next tip is all about location. Now, there's a couple of things to bear in mind when it comes to where do you wanna shoot the car. The first thing is, what's actually gonna be appropriate for the car you're shooting. So if you're shooting a classic car, you probably wouldn't go to an, an urban gritty environment surrounded by graffiti. Equally, if you're shooting a, a heavily modified car, you're not gonna shoot it at a country mansion. So 
try and come up with something that actually suits the car and suits the environment that you're going for. So if you're shooting the race car, maybe see if you can get it on the track or in the pits. That's gonna be the best environment to show that car. So the other thing to consider guys when it comes to location is, is it gonna to be too busy to work? Yeah, the background's gonna be full of other things like people, other cars, you know, things that are gonna be distracting to the viewer of your images. And ideally you want it to be nice and quiet and you want space to work. So what I've done today is I've come to this empty road that I know of, it's effectively a dead end. There's a couple of houses at one end, but you don't get a lot of through traffic. So you can actually work quite well without being disturbed. And the other reason is, as you can probably see, we're starting to get some color in the leaves. So we're gonna go for an autumnal style shoot, as you'll see from some of the images. And we're gonna be, you know, trying to accentuate the colors that are already here in the, in the you know, leaves and oranges. And obviously got a nice purple car. We're gonna get some nice contrast between the purple of the car and the color of the leaves. Now, location is actually such an important thing. I'm gonna do an entire video on how to find good photography locations things you can look for, ways that you can find them, and some of my best ones in the UK. Tip number four is about using polarizers. Now polarizers effect effectively get rid of glare from shots and you can use it to get rid of the glare from water if you're doing water photography, but for cars, you get a lot of unwanted reflections and it can be the, the environment reflecting onto the panels of the car or it can be light bouncing off the bonnet of the car or the, the windscreen of the car and it can, it can ruin shots or it can make shots look um, a lot less clean than you want them. So I'm gonna flip over to my camera camera view now and show you what happens when you actually twist the polarizer. So this is my setup, I've got my 85mm on a tripod and I've got a polarizer on the front which you can spin and depending on what angle the polarizer is at it depends on what part of the car you're going to cut the reflections from which you'll see in a second. So as you spin the polarizer you can see how it's cutting the reflection from different parts of the car. So right here it's cutting it from the side of the car and as I continue to spin it it goes back to cutting the reflections from the bonnet and the windscreen. You might not be able to get the perfect shot in one go, so you might have to take multiple shots with the polarizer in different positions and then merge them in Photoshop. In the final image, you can see we weren't able to get rid of the reflections of the leaves in the trees completely, but it does a, a good job at reducing that and giving a much cleaner image. So tip number five is about lighting, which in outdoor photography pretty much means time of day. Now, golden hour is something that you've probably heard of before. It's the first hour after sunrise or the last hour before sunset. And what you get from it is this really nice golden quality of the light. It's a really warm light and it's also low in the sky. So what you'll get is this nice angle of light coming across your image, which gives really nice pleasing shadows. It's quite flattering for portrait photography, but it also looks really, really good for car photography. So if you can, try and schedule your shoots in the morning or the evening. Now, you've got to work with what you've got. Like today, we've got an overcast day, so we're gonna just have to shoot. We've only got the car for a limited amount of time, so we don't have that luxury. We've got to work with what we've got. But if you can, do try to schedule your shoots for when you know you're gonna get the best light. And then the other tip is what I'm gonna be doing in my next video, which is about waiting until it gets dark and then actually using your own lights to create some really interesting images that you wouldn't necessarily have thought you'd be able to get in a location like this one. Quick little bonus tip here, which applies to all photography, not just car photography, is you can find other people to go and shoot with. Not only will it make it more fun, but you'll also find that they see things and do things in a different way to you and that you can learn from each other. So here are some of Mark's photos from this session. Uh, big thanks to him. It, makes it so much more fun doing stuff together and uh, I, I really do learn a lot from him because he's really good definitely go and check out his channel as well i'll put the links in the description well, that's it for this video i hope you've got something from it if you have do drop me a like and subscribe it actually really does help and i've got some really good stuff coming up some really cool cars and hopefully some cool photography i'll see you in the next one